Hello, this is Second 5 Minute Friday and today we're going to look at programming the tool in HSM Works for this new um, carbide spot chamfer tool that I got from, from eBay. Uh, £19, haven't used it yet, so we need to see how, uh, how well it performs. Well, the first stage is to get the CAM software programmed so it recognises the shape and get it put into the machine control so that we don't get a crash. Let's get started. So there's a whole range of different uh, tool holding solutions for milling machines. We've got even got a, a big ISO 50 taper here, but the machine that we use for the majority of the time uses these smaller ISO 40 tapers. I mean, there's R8s as well, but the actual tool holding system can change as well. So this is a big Sandvik T-Max cutter used for facing. We've got auto lock chuck. Uh, we've got a Morse taper with a reamer in it. We've got the ER40 with our uh, chamfer cutter, and we've even got an auto lock collet here. And they're all different lengths, they're all different shapes, and they've all got different abilities to crash into fixtures. So we're going to be taking a look specifically at this. It's an ISO 40 taper with an ER40 um, collet with our 12mm chamfer tool in. So in the last 5 Minute Friday we looked at um, calculating the tool length offset for, um, for any given milling cutter. And, it, and the process is going to be much the same again. Um, I won't go through the details, you can watch that video uh, if you want to know the uh, ins and outs of it. But essentially we're going to take measurements at key points and then I'll record those and we'll take those details over to the CAM software. So what we need to do is go to the tool library and set up our own new library. This is a blank install of HSM Works. So using the new library we can set up a mill turning, um, a mill or turning library. I've created a mill library here and in there we'll need to create a tool holder. That way we can define the tool holder and reuse it again and again for different kinds of tools. So this is an ISO 40 ER40 colours. Um, you can add comments um, if it's a, got a particular manufacturer's part number or you're using some kind of racking system where you use unique tool IDs you can go from there. Uh, we call this programming um, a tool holder but to be honest, that's really a bit of a grand term because all we're doing is defining geometry. And from the vernier height table, um, we measured six different pieces of geometry. The first two were just the taper. Now, the taper is not really important for the actual simulation within HSM Works. And the taper is simply for aesthetic reasons. So we'll start off and uh, put that information in and, and work our way through putting all the key information. For each one, you're going to need a height an upper diameter and a lower diameter and by inputting all those you're going to build the tool up. So here we have the, um, the completed tool holder. Uh, we'll save that and now it's time to create the milling tool. So we're going to hit the mill tool and we'll get presented with a, a new window. We get a general tab. Now the tool number here is really quite an important um, section. This ties in with the actual tool table on your machine. So on the Heidenheim 320 that we use, uh, we've got 14 tools um, already programmed. So we're going to call this tool 15. Um, it's a manual tool change, so that's important to, to click that if you don't have an automatic tool changer. Without doing so, uh, you won't get your optional stop to, to actually put the tool change in. I'm also going to turn uh, cool and off. Um, we'll then define the cutter, and now there's lots of different types um, within there. We need not a flat mill, but um, a spot chamfer, a spot drill. Here we are. And we get some options. So we'll work from left to right. We've got a 45 degree chamfer tool, so that's 90 included in angle, so we're into 90 here. Working our way down, the major diameter is uh, 12 mil. It's, uh, it goes to a point, so that's zero at the tip. Uh, millimeters, we're going to enter the shoulder length and the flute length. So that's used to calculate the uh, maximum depth of cut if this was a normal cutting tool. Because it's a spot chamfer, we're only really going to be using the, um, the bottom portion, the actual taper. Um, we enter the body length. Um, the overall length is, is the full length of the tool, including the part sticking into the, uh, into the collet. So I'm not entirely sure why it needs to know that. Perhaps it uses it in deflection calculations so you can work out maximum feeds 
to be used with any given tool. But once we've entered all that in, we're going to choose 80 for our overall length. Um, we, can, we can save that and that entire tool and holder combination will be, um, will be defined. So final thing, we're going to select from our library. There we go, um, our ER40 and then that entire tool is now, um, is now saved. Final thing to do is the feeds and speeds. We're going to use um, 2000 RPM because these are just defaults. Um, you can tweak the settings between every single operation. So 2000 RPM here and we'll also change our default feed rate as well and just halve that. So once we've done that we can click OK and that is now saved as tool 15. So we'll close this um, this assembly and we'll open the, um, the single part which is just the base here and we're going to create a 2D chamfer operation just to show you where the tool lives. So now hit library and we can choose tool 15 and there it is modeled. Now it's just a case of creating the operations, posting the G-code or the uh, Heidenheim Klartex code in this case and then it can be loaded into the machine. So if you like this video um, like and subscribe because uh, every week we'll be doing uh, CNC and machining tips and tricks.